transition. The transition of a employer. The transition of an employer. The transition of the employer. This was a transitional moment for me. We lost an employee to, uh, yesterday. One that has become like family to me. And that really gets me thinking, you know, what do we do when somebody that we've trusted so well, who has come so far, we get so used to them being there, but that we could never even real, really fathom the idea that they might not be there. How do you deal with that? Like it hurts, it really does. And so the things that I'm thinking about today are, well, first of all, let me explain the situation. Really, really lovely, lovely person who really struggled in the first six months with us. She didn't have any experience when we hired her and we were okay with that because we needed somebody that we could train as we go. And uh, she struggled because she's from Australia, like she struggled with the language and she struggled with the grammar for our emails and things like that. And her and I didn't really see eye to eye at first. And, uh, but she was there as my office administrator's assistant. And my office administrator was close with her and they were happy and they were doing a great job together. And then my office administrator was getting ready to go on maternity leave and there came a moment where this employee and I kind of had it out and I gave her the pep talk that I give so many of my new, maybe not new, so many of my employees that are kind of struggling with like um, taking control or taking responsibility or being accountable. I let her know hey, you're going to make mistakes and you have to make mistakes in order to learn. And I will accept that. I will accept that you're going to make mistakes because she said that's what holds you back is fear of making mistakes. I said, I'll accept that. As long as you make sure that you're doing everything in your power to correct the mistakes, identify the mistake, figure out why and how it happened and correct it. And so she had a turning point where she felt better. And a few weeks later, she thanked me. She said that it gave her more uh, control that she would be able to like work without fear. And she excelled. She did amazing. She just, she just did amazing. And then she started to take over sales for us on site consults and she was doing really great at that. And she said, I really love doing that. And I'd like to talk about taking that over. And I said, yes, uh, as soon as I get back from my holidays, we will have that meeting and we will uh, discuss that. And you know, in hindsight, probably where I made my mistake was not actually booking the meeting so that she'd have something to look forward to, but something happened while I was away. And I haven't figured out what, but she, she works one week on and one week off. And so she was going on her week off. I left on my journey on Monday and uh, Tuesday was her last day before her week off. And then she came back the following Wednesday. She worked for Wednesday, but she left because she was sick. She went home early because she was sick. And then she took the week off. And then I decided to check on her this Monday to make sure she was okay and see if there was anything she needed. And 10 minutes after I checked on her, we received an email with her resignation. The email simply stated, I regret to inform you that I am going to, I'm going, that this is my uh, resignation effective immediately. So no notice, nothing. No, I'll help you train somebody else nothing we had her for dinner at thanksgiving because she has no family here and her husband was working that day so we had her for dinner and talked about how she's family now like she's the one that instigated these conversations about being family i've always been a little bit on guard about who um 
who I open up my heart to, especially when it comes to employees, you know, you, you're kind and caring and considerate to a degree because you always sort of want to take, you always sort of want to keep this um, line about, you know, the boundaries about family and employees that are family. So for her one year anniversary, um, it was our team event and we acknowledged her as employee of the year and acknowledged all of the amazing accomplishments she's made in the last year and gave her a $500 gift card. And she was just excited and happy. She was blown away. She was crying happy tears. Like she just said, I've never felt so appreciated as I feel when I'm when working here, I've never had a job this amazing. Like she says that all the time. And then all of a sudden quits without notice. So my sus I suspect that there was something that happened between any one of us and her that to us was business. Whether it was a quick, hey, get on it. We need this done right away. Or why didn't you get that done? said in a moment of anxiety that affected her emotionally because she is an emotional person and she also has extreme imposter syndrome. We have no idea who it was. We've all been talking about who it could have been. And as far as we know, all of us were on good terms with her. So we don't know who it is. So the, here's the lesson here is that you just never know what somebody's going through and you never know what's really going on inside of their mind. And you can check with them because I check with, in, with her a lot about how she's feeling. I give her a lot of praise and a lot of recognition. And still this happened. And so right before this call, I was actually in tears thinking about her because I value her as family over employee. And so losing her as an employee, I'm afraid that I lost her as, um, you know, my extended family and I'm not sure how to get back to that. And these are the things that happen when you're a kind and caring employer, you're growing and you don't allow a separation I don't think that I'm ever going to invite an employee to Thanksgiving dinner again if I am going to be choosing to have employees celebrate the holidays with us I think it's going to be all employees so we'll have a Thanksgiving dinner for everybody rather than just one person being invited I think that we cross the line of professionalism. And I think it was hard, too hard for her to deal with. At any rate, I wish that we could find a solution. I messed when I, so we were really concerned about her because this is unusual behavior for her. For her to just stop, to just put on the brakes and say, that's it. I am not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done as of today, like without any thought or consideration for us and what we need to run the business is not like her. So, and she wouldn't speak to us. She wouldn't answer the phone to us. So we uh, told her that if we didn't hear her voice, we would um, talk to the police about a wellness consult. It just seemed really out of the character for her that we were really concerned about her. Like, she has um, a spouse who uh, we sometimes wonder uh, if he's if he's kind to her. So, you know, I watch a lot of Dateline. So she did call my daughter and she was sobbing on the phone. So it sounds like she's almost having a mental breakdown. And so I don't know what's going to come of this. Um, and I don't even know where to go from this because... Regardless, in the end, she did leave us without any respect for us and what we do. You know, we'll have to see where this goes and I'll keep you all updated. But uh, it's a big lesson in growth, right? We have been so focused on growth and getting our systems and processes in place that maybe we overlooked something with her. 
the same time, you gotta have some grit, you know? We are kind and thoughtful and considerate of our employees, but you know, everybody needs to be accountable too. You know, you need to be professional and grown up about things, especially if you're working in the office. And, you know, maybe in the end, she's just not cut out for it. You know, I asked her, I sent her a message back and said, can we discuss ways to alleviate the pressure? I forgot to tell you that she responded and said, this job is too mentally and physically demanding. Now it's not physically demanding because she's at the office. She's not out cleaning. She's not required to take more than 20 steps to any area of the office that she needs to be at. She's not required to lift heavy objects. So I think what she meant was she's been sick. And I think what she meant was the mental strain is causing her to be unwell. I personally think that she has a problem um, in her personal life that is spilling over into her work life. And she thinks that eliminating the work is going to make the home life easier. And I feel like perhaps she's in a situation where maybe her spouse is seeing her excel in her work life and doesn't like that. Those are all just, you know, acquisi ac accusations. So it could be anything, but I'm, I'm usually more astute than that. And I think that that might be what's going on. But at any rate, I asked her if there's any way that we could discuss, you know, changing her work schedule or changing her uh, duties so that it, it would be less overwhelming for her and she didn't reply. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a couple weeks and probably drop off her Christmas present that we had purchased for her anyways at her door. At this point, it's not that I, you know, I'm not begging her to come back. We've already found a replacement. That's the lovely thing about having a large team. We have a, a couple of members of our cleaning team that have been talking about wanting to get into the office. And so we've, we're doing interviews for our cleaning staff to see who's best a best fit. And, you know, it's nice as they understand our pro systems and processes. So easier to, easier to um, transition, right? So I'm not worried about replacing her, but I am worried that we have to replace her, you know? I just want her to be okay. So there's no real lesson here. There's no real coaching here. Just a chance for you guys to see that I am human too, and I have problems as well. Um, you know, I'm always, I'm always looking on the bright side and I'm always trying to give you the best advice I can. But some days are just hard. Like as a business owner, some days are just hard. But you know what? Taking the time to express to you this pain has actually made me feel better. And I guess that's what's uh, amazing about having someone to talk to. Even though you're not here in the room with me right now, I am going to put this on our group page. And I feel like you're there. I feel like I'm not alone in this. And I hope that you feel the same because I am here for you and I am happy to help you maneuver these situations. Uh, I learned a pretty big lesson here and don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be hardened to my employees. But sometimes I think you can easily get caught up in the fact that this employee is like family to you, that they're going to put up with you no matter what. And I probably failed her. I missed something that I probably would have seen if I wasn't so busy being so secure in the fact that she was there. I think that's what I learned from this. And so I feel better. Thank you to all of you for taking the time to watch this. And uh, I apologize if um, seeing me in this weakened state makes you feel in any way negative. But this, these are the things that happen no matter what. You know, I always say being a business owner is hard and it will always have its rough moments. 
Um, I have very, very joyous moments uh, in my business and who I am as an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. But you know, on the scales of justice, <laughs> you have to have both. You can't um, enjoy the amazing times if you have don't feel the pain. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't appreciate the amazing times if I didn't have the sad times. And a part of growth is making mistakes and learning from them having failures and coming back from them. That's what it's all about. And so I have already given some great thought into the next hire for this position. And number one, the way that I will be in the interviews is you must be able to handle conflict. You must be able to handle constructive criticism. You must be professional and understand that sometimes things just need to be said. And sometimes they will be said. I think I sometimes am too much of a friend to my staff. And so when I uh, insinuate my hierarchy, they get offended. I am the CEO of Cap Cleaners Incorporated. And I will from now on act as such. Now this employee came to me when we were just starting to really take off. So she came in, you know, as a family member, kind of. So the next one will be more professional. And now that I think about it, I think these are the casualties of growth. You know, some of you are dealing with having your family and friends working for you. You know, you're just starting out and you have family and friends working for you. And I have coached a few of you and said, there's going to be a transition um, and usually those people that are with you in the first few months or for a few years aren't going to be with you for the long haul and the reason is because they get comfortable and complacent and when, then when you make the big changes and move towards growth Imposter syndrome sets in, fear sets in. You don't have as much time for them as you used to have, and so they're offended. <laughs> they see you growing your business. Uh, they think that you're rich when maybe you're reaping some rewards, but really, honestly, growing business, growing your business takes you to invest in your business. Therefore, you're, you're spending money on your business. And so people get a misconception that you're just rich and you can just throw money around. And then when you're not throwing money at them, then they're upset. And when you're treating them like all the rest of the employees then they're upset and all of these things. So now I see it. And thank you for letting me talk this out. You can hear it in my voice that I'm starting to come back from this now because I realize this is a part of growth. We allow grow some people. And unfortunately, that's what we have to do. And the difference is always I'm saying there's a difference between an employer and an employee. I am the employer and she is the employee. She couldn't handle it. And I'm not hard. <laughs> I'm not hard to work for. I am uh, strict and I do demand results, but I am not uh, a monster and I do treat my people with respect and dignity. So in the end, if it was too hard for her, that is a her thing and not a me thing. What I have to do is find somebody that it's not too hard for. And I think that the person that I have coming in to replace her is that person. So there we go. You know what? I should entitle this. the. What do you, what would you call it? Like the transition? The transition of a employer. The transition of an employer. The transition of the employer. This was a transitional moment for me. I'll be forever changed. These transitional moments happen so much in business. Uh, and having someone to talk to helps. So get this, I'm a coach. I coach 
dozens of people and I coach hundreds of people in uh, my A-Team Accelerator program. I am an employer. I employ more than 50 people and we're looking to go to two, 300 people next uh, year. I am a CEO of a business that is growing and expanding uh, beyond my wildest dreams and I love it. I love it. I have a coach and mentor who hasn't really been there for me that much lately. And it shows because I have nobody to talk to. So I'm talking to an empty screen and I'm getting a great relief from it because I am going to post this in the group and you're all going to get to see it. <laughs> so comment below if you've been through this and how you're handling it. Let me know if you need some help in these sorts of transitions. In the days when there's nobody else to talk to. Sometimes there's a simple solution and you just need somebody else to confirm it. So I'm grateful to you for listening and I'm grateful for any comments that you give because I am feeling so much better now, but still, I'd love to know that I'm not alone in this. So that's it for me. That's all I had to say today. Thank you so much for uh, paying attention through this whole entire thing. And uh, I wish you all well. Go out and conquer your day. <laughs>